You said recently, Alex, that some tech leaders are calling for an AI pause because they don't have a product ready. How much of AI right now is innovation in theater? What's real and what's hype? What should we be paying attention to? Well, the, the big thing that we have to avoid in, in, in our country, but, but there's less of a problem for us than in other countries, is there's a, just an attempt to dampen AI and its utilization by people who don't have a product. And that is like, this is actually a big deal inside and outside of government. Now, luckily for us in this country, it's a much smaller deal than say in Europe, where it's like, you know, there's all these discussions, some of which I very much support and some of which we can power. How, where does the data go? How does it used? Where does it flow? What is in the algorithm? Is the algorithm discriminatory? Mm -hmm. But some of it is you'd say in German, vorgeschoben, which means kind of just put out there in, as a theatrical thing because there aren't really that many. There are some uh, companies providing uh, AI in the form of advanced machine learning or large language models. Um, the, we, we have a slight bias here at Palantir. We build a software that will allow you to process large language models, rebuild the output of large language models, turn it into what we call an agent, which is a safe algorithm you can run across your enterprise, and we can interact back and forth with large language models or, or other forms of AI so that the, the algorithm of large mail, large mail understands your enterprise, but you don't outsource the knowledge of your enterprise to the large language model. So I, I believe that that will be the future and that these things implemented correctly, large language models and AI are a crazy advantage over people who don't. And you could just take very simple examples on margins and business, efficiency and allocation, being able, resource allocation, um, uh, rebuilding your enterprise so that you get the most efficient parts at the right time, um, allocation of assets, resources, um, figuring out, by the way, one of the most important uses of AI for America that we're just beginning to see, which we're seeing at a, a, a company I won't mention, just because I haven't, but like manufacturing, often manufacturing has a cultural element. So. If you want to manufacture something in America like is manufactured in Japan or Taiwan, that's actually a really hard thing to do. But one of the things uh, uh, algorithms and AI will allow you to do is control the instruments, control production so that you get an American workforce, the advantages of being in the U.S. and production like you exactly like you would have in Japan mm -hmm. or in mm -hmm. Taiwan or other places. And so... That is not theater. That is, and, and by the way, the part that's definitely not theater is you're going to watch the GDP of America compared to the world. This is what I also wanted to ask you about because it, it does seem to me like we, it could affect productivity, right? Which is the input to GDP. And in America, productivity and things like healthcare, education, even areas if we disagree on politics, we can both agree those are very important to work better for our country. Like productivity is stagnated in those areas for decades. Is AI finally going to break in and, and maybe help productivity there? Is, are we going to well, be able to fix Well, we have a lot of our, we had no uh, clients in, in, Edu we'll leave education. That's we're not heavily involved in that. But um, on healthcare, pharmaceuticals, uh, hospital care, we had basically very few clients last year. And now I think we power allocation at fifteen t between thirteen and fourteen percent of all hospital bed allocation in the country. Wow. We have, um, and it's simply because um, the people in these industries know that they need instruments to increase efficiency and productivity. Part of the reason why it was hard to do this is the use case they have is very difficult because you have to increase productivity with low margins under harsh conditions, meaning you will, mm -hmm. you can get sued, you do get sued. There are hip, there are privacy protections that are the most sacrosanct in the world. Uh, there are issues around uh, resource allocation that involve class and race. Uh, which uh, which mean that I don't want to touch those. So those are those are issues. Those are issues that uh, that the where you would you need to be able to track what goes into the algorithm, how the algorithm is used, uh, and how that algorithm then leads back to efficiency without be getting into hot water either morally, institutionally, or legally. Palantir is ideal for that. Yeah. And so. But again, it's precisely because one of the most amazing things in business is no one believes that we're, you know, that Palantir's deep understanding of uh, the technical issues that involve data protection, civil liberties, are things that generated our product. Yes, 
But if you're dealing with this use case, there's only one engine you can use because we've spent 20 years thinking and building products for this. And, and interestingly, it's the kind of things you use to identify adversaries with software mm -hmm. uh, also presuppose uh, um, a, a data protection, civil liberties bias. It's not just find enemy, it's yeah. find enemy is this the stupid general we want to keep alive, or is this the general that's smart? <laughs> okay, speaking of that, we got to talk about Ukraine then. <laughs> speaking of stupid generals to keep alive, that's great. Let's change gears to that. Like, like what's, you were the first Western CEO to visit Zelensky in Ukraine. I thought that was a very bold thing to do. It was very cool. You went over there very quickly. Like, can you paint a picture of Ukraine's capabilities pre and post Palantir? I, I, in, in the Ukraine stuff, I have to be super general, uh, okay. both because uh, Every government, yeah, they, they but um, first of all, and again, this is what I should say, but it also is true. The Ukrainians are courageous uh, in a way that it's almost unfathomable when you're sitting here, like you meet people who are going into battle. Uh, the Ukrainian people, and I realize there's a lot of debate in, in our country, and I welcome debate as like a kind of, very much on the side of the First Amendment and uh, um, kind of all the way up to, you know, it being as expansive as it can be. We used to have this debate inside of Palantir, by the way, early on on a lot of issues, right? So that's something you always, you, it's always part of the culture. Uh, the right to express yourself, including things that will upset other people, is core to a functioning democracy. Yeah. And, you know, the fact that you're being offended shows you're living in a democracy. And, uh, and, you know, that's, I, 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 under, I, I try to empathize with the other side of that issue. I really, because I think you have to steel man all these arguments. But in the end, uh, it, once you, you know, the, the rights you give up will be used against you. Yeah. And uh, that's something that, you know, it, it does place a high burden on people who, have to listen to speech that they find offensive, and and I, I engage all the way to the margin, and and if engage with people whose speech I find offensive, and and I talk to all sorts of people in all sorts of small rooms, where oh, by the way, there's a bobcat behind you, oh, wow, a really nice, That's uh, a cool bobcat. You guys should get that on film. National, That's from the national, uh, <laughs> national. That is park. nuts. <laughs> Alex always lives in the most interesting areas. <laughs> wildlife. Look at uh, it. Wow. That is like, it's like a mini tiger. <laughs> wow. That is. Have you seen that here, Lutz? It's like, that's... It's here to honor you, Joe. <laughs> I've never seen <laughs> it before. It's a good omen for us, Alex. Um, Mary. <laughs> uh, in, in Ukraine, you went to these people, saw oh, no. people in small so rooms. So they, usually when you go, you know, I've spent 20 years going to important institutions of all kinds, and... There is often, but not always, a moment where you're in a small room with someone and they're like, yeah, but the truth is I don't agree with so-and-so. I don't believe, I, you know, I think my leader is beyond, or something. Yeah. There was none of that. Like, the, 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 the amount of kind of deep patriotism, and again, I'm talking about all sorts of people. Hi, I, I, like, I like talking to people quite frankly, who are unimportant. So I, mean, I have a kind of honor to meet lots of important people. And this is not because they're afraid of expressing a different viewpoint. It's because it, the Ukrainians are, it is not a place where people are particularly afraid of expressing any viewpoint. You yeah, know, you, 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 you are going to hear a lot of free speech. They are fighting because they believe. And you can debate a lot of things. Uh, and, uh, and there's a healthy debate about the Ukraine uh, war in this country, uh, but I can tell you from my experience on the ground, uh, these people are fighting, and they are willing to fight. And you know, at a general level, without going into details, some of the places that have used our product have been bombed. People have died, and the same day, those people are back at work. Wow! Same day. It is, I mean, it's like, and they're also very, very technical. At a high level, what's Palantir able to do that other systems are not able to so do? So, the, the Palantir is useful for the Ukraine. Some of it's the part that's public is obviously documenting war crimes, but war crimes are hard to document because of data protection issues to take it to court, where the evidence come from, who's touched it, 
chain of custody issue. So that's kind of uh, we're doing. Um, understanding who's doing what on the other side is a classic use case for PG. So uh, how is the adversary, in how, how, as a matter of theory, you can just go through the products. So there's a kind of the civilian prosecution, there's in the PG foundry constellation, there's an ability to understand what the adversary is doing kind of with their operatives, who's doing what, how's doing, is doing it. With segmented uh, 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 data access, which is crazy important in the war. It's funny, it's that people don't understand you need segmented or high data protection because the, the, the knowledge that these people have is so valuable, meaning people will die if it gets out, that yeah. you have to control who sees what. Um, Gaia, meaning who is it will allow you on the battlefield to uh, be able to see where in real time, what plan out your battle, uh, attack, retreat, understand the adversary. And then the most powerful use of our product currently, and again, at, of one of our products is being able to identify an adversary over a large long mass using AI and that obviously it's been reported has led to um, a different level of ability to acquire the the, the adversary's uh, position. Yep. And the the there are so many lessons that we need to learn in this country, uh, and we'll learn. But one of the obvious lessons is we are in a software world. <laughs> it is like this is. It was the case that this was the ramblings of a couple people 20 years ago that you know people didn't think should have been in this business, including you and me and our other co-founders and early employees. It's just a banality. And uh, the other thing is our adversaries now are awake. China and Russia realize this. They didn't realize it before. Yeah. And that is going to change where they invest their money. And we'll give them ability to catch up if we're not on top of yeah, this. I mean, this is what this was a thesis 20 years ago. Is this would clearly become by far the most important part of the defense world, which it, it seems to have become now. It's a little scary that they're aware of it too, but it's nice to have a lead for now.